Whoever knew you could get so many stories just from one tiny little instrument? A Red Violin, released in 1998 and is directed by Francois Girard, who is also behind such films like Congo, who is also behind such films like Cargo, Silk, Boy Choir, and The Song of Names. And this film is starring really only two people, the composer John Rigliano and violinist Joshua Bell. Because the main thing doing the storytelling in this film is the music. Yes, we have actors in here and all that fun little movie jazz performance art stuff. It's the violinist. It's the composer. It's the instrumentalists who are composing this incredible score of this movie. And I've never started a review like that, and I wanted to make that clear, that the star of this show is the composer and the violinist. Everyone else is just co-star. They're all B, C, D actors listed in this movie. But if you care to know, it's also starring Samuel L. Jackson, Carlo Cacci, Irene Graziole, Jean-Luc Bedu, Greta Scacci, Jason Fleming, Sylvia Chang, Holm Fjord, and Don McKellar. And the reason why we're talking about the Red Violin today is because it was a PayPal recommendation and donation from one of my longest supporters and contributors on this channel, Mr. and Mrs. Rusted Beetle. Thank you very much for this recommendation and your donation. It's been a while since I've heard from you too. So hopefully you two are doing all right. And thank you so much for this recommendation of this film that I have never heard of before. And I am so thankful that now I have watched it. And it's free on YouTube, which is even better. So if any of you do want to check this film out after I review it, please do. I implore you to, because this is one of the best movies that I have seen and have reviewed this year. Nicola Bisotti is an Italian violin maker in the 1600s, and he has supposedly made a masterpiece of a violin that he plans on giving to his unborn child. However, during childbirth, both his wife and child passed away. And the night after their death, he puts on the famous red varnish that gives this violin's name the Red Violin. And the rest of the movie unfolds as an anthology piece, showing this violin's journey through different countries and different centuries. Really, it becomes a non-linear anthology film. We start off with the creator creating the violin, and then we move on to this student prodigy who is this amazing violin player, and he's only like seven years old, and then it moves on to this almost like Shakespearean Bon Jovi-like violin player moving on in the next century. Then somehow it moves all the way over to communist China, making its way all the way back to Montreal, Canada in the 1990s. That's where Samuel L. Jackson comes in. And all throughout the movie, we keep cutting back to short little scenes in Montreal, Canada, where the violin is being sold at an auction. And you see a whole bunch of people bidding for it and wanting it, and then you get their backstory about why they want it and why this thing is so famous. It's a, an amazing story, and it's an amazing film. It's an amazing way to tell the story of this violin. It's a movie that just makes me happy. I am very passionate about art and art's influence and importance in society. Not a lot of people realize how important art, whether that's acting, whether that's painting, whether it's singing or playing with an instrument, art has its purpose in society of something that all of us can strive to, to fight for, or strive to create for. So to see this film put so much stock and so much importance on this one tiny little musical instrument that is supposedly like the best musical instrument that has ever been created down to the, the structure and the molecules that were used, it puts a freaking big smile on my face. And I'll be honest, I wasn't sure how I was feeling about this movie in the first little anthology bit, the first little chapter, because it starts off, this woman is pregnant, and she goes to this fortune teller, it's one of the nannies or midwives that she has in the house, and she's reading these tarot cards, and she's talking about how she will live on forever, and she will have all of these heirs, and she will have riches, and all this stuff, and then in the next scene, I talked about in the plot summary, she dies. So I was like, well, <laughs> you got that one wrong. But as the movie unfolds, we get to the other end anthology pieces, we're introduced to all these other characters, we see how using this one particular violin can affect the music in just so slight a way that makes it brilliant and amazing. You start to realize that, oh, the tarot cards, that wasn't meant for her, the, the wife, it was meant for the violin. And... I, 
well, yeah, I almost went into a spoiler, and I'm not gonna do that! It's just a really clever film, and usually when I see these anthology films, it's usually like in a indie horror film or something like that, so it's nice to see the anthology concept in a dramatic piece like this. And I love seeing how the concept of music can have so many different consequences and effects on the people that decide to pick it up. You have this young little prodigy who is incredible and is playing tremendously and is planning to go off with these big rich people to become even more famous and have the whole world know them. But you can see in his eyes as the scenes go on that his eyes are becoming bloodshot because all he thinks about is this violin. He sleeps with the violin next to him in his bed. He is constantly playing. That's all he knows. And then in the 1800s, we get to see this William Shakespeare-like composer of a violinist who is using this violin just for lust and for his muses. And when he is having sex and he's playing this violin, he comes up with the most glorious songs and pieces that you've ever heard. I tell you, art and music is a very sensual thing if you do it right. Or if you have the right instruments, I guess. You know, from... Yeah. And then seeing this Western instrument make itself all the way over to communist China, where they were trying to get rid of all of this Western stuff and talk about how stupid all the Western concepts and arts and music is. But you see them talk about those pieces and those composers and famous artists throughout the Western ages that kind of break through just the standard mold of what a composer is or a musician is. People like Beethoven, people like Shakespeare. And it's all told through this violin and it's just a god this movie's so freaking good it also shows how crazy musicians are they they really are and if you're a musician i think you would agree with that i mean i'm i'm an actor i have my masters in theater i've, I've married a classical musician she's a vocal performance and there's this striving for perfection in every performance that you do that is an impossibility to obtain because humanity, the human condition, is not perfect. There is always something that you can change or something that you can tweak to make it new or to make it better or to make it worse. So to see these musicians or music historians find this piece and realize the perfection that it is, somehow this impossibility of a perfect thing in the musical world exists, to see them all kind of just freak out over that it's hilarious and it's very validating because like i said all musicians are kind of crazy when it comes to the idea of perfection the red violin is a tremendous dramatic piece that shows the importance of art and music and the beauty of music and how it affects everyone regardless of how old you are regardless of where you come from the society your culture whatever Music is the most universal art form that all of us have, and this film just showcases that. It's it's amazing. I'm gonna give the Red Violin five out of five Blu-rays. I think I see blue. He looks glorious. All right, everyone, now comes my favorite part of my videos where I pick which movie I'm gonna be watching next. And the next one comes as a PayPal recommendation and donation from another one of my longtime contributors and supporters of this channel. Name the stars, here we go again with a movie called Under the Shadow. Looks kind of scary. We're getting close to Halloween. Think it might be time to bust out the Halloween decorations again. I saw the poster, it's a mother with her daughter and she's in a room and there's a shadow that's being cast on them. She looks kind of scared. I will say that's kind of like the generic poster of all home invasion horror films. <laughs> so <laughs> we'll see if it's it's not generic at all next time. So guys, if you've seen The Red Violin, what did you think about it? Or if you've never seen it before and you stumbled across it because of this video, then comment below, let me know what you thought about it. And as always, if you like what you see here, if you like my take on movies, then hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit that bell. See you on the next time I release Max Movie Review. So guys, I will see you next time on the channel. But in the meantime, be well, be good to each other, and go watch a movie. Take care, guys.